Well, hello, this is Jeff Gadiosi, and you're on MisplacedDraws.com, where music comes to life. And it's here, that time of year again, where we count down the best music that we heard in 2022. We're going to do it in two parts this year. This video is going to count down 20 through 11, along with some honorable mentions. And then we're going to do another video with your top 10. Now, first off, kind of the ground rules I set for picking. Um, no live records, no greatest hits, no covers, no re-recordings, which is why great records like Beth Hart's Led Zeppelin Tribute or Anthony Gomes' High Voltage Blues, which is kind of a re-recording of a lot of his older material, aren't going to be on this list. Um, there's also a lot of themes that pop up among these records and the songs that I pick from each one that we'll talk about as we go through. But let's kick it off with some honorable mentions. First off, Ches Kane, Power Zone, a really good record, maybe even better than her first record, which was in my top three last year. The only thing, though, is I think it suffered from poor timing. That first record, you know, with the bright 80s feel came out in the spring. You were able to listen to it all summer long. This record has a similar style and feel to it, but it came out in October and I just found myself not listening to it quite as much. Um, Chess is a great person. She's been on here a couple of times. She has a great voice. I can't wait to see what's next for her. Coming up next, uh, two 80s bands that really put out great records this year. The Scorpions, Rock Believer, their best in decades. And it's really good to see them back with some strong songs. And the other is Striper in the final battle. Um, Striper's been on this roll for about the past six or seven years of just putting out really, really great records and heavy records. Um, both of these bands, those records are just so much better than their peers' recent output. Is anybody still listening to the Def Leppard record that came out earlier this year? Or even the Bon Jovi one from a couple years back? Um we do to the 80s, we got to move on to the 90s. There were two 90s alt-rock bands that really came on strong this year. Collective Soul with their record Vibrating and the Goo Goo Dolls with their record Chaos in Bloom. Both of these are really strong, show some great songwriting between these two bands and really ranks up there with some of the best work that they've done. Uh, finally, for honorable mentions, one of my favorite bands out of New York City, The Sweet Things, and their record, Brown Leather. It's a very different record from their first one. The first one was kind of more New York punk. This one, kind of think a little more Mick Taylor era Stones. Um, while we're talking about The Sweet Things, their former guitar player, Lauren Berman, he had a record out called A Little Midnight, and I highly recommend that one as well. Um, let's kick off the countdown. So coming at number 20 is a band that you might be surprised to see on this list. Um, I'm kind of surprised because it's not usually the sort of thing I listen to, but Muse and their record, Will of the People. Muse has always been a great live band, but I've never really liked a record of theirs end to end until now. Strong songs, great guitar playing, and just it, it's a fun, interesting listen. Um, the only weird thing I think is that song Will of the People, the title track, the chorus reminds me a lot of Marilyn Manson's Beautiful People. I'm not sure if Manson's the guy that you kind of want to be equated to right now. Um, but my pick for the song is Ghosts, How Can I Move On? It is a haunting, melodic song, just stunning keyboard work. Matt Bellamy's voice sounds amazing. Coming in at number 19 is the first in the one of the themes we're going to see which is members of various bands getting together to form something new. At 19, we have Kings of Mercia and their self-titled record. Now, this record surprised me a little bit. Um, Jim Matheos from Fate's Warning is on guitar and wrote all the songs, but it's a far more straight-ahead rock than the prog metal we're used to from Jim. On vocals is Steve Overland from FM. Uh, if you're not familiar with Steve, think sort of Joe Bonamassa meets Paul Rogers in his voice. The song I want to pick also sets up a theme that we'll see as we go on. Um, a track called Everyday Angels. And it's what we've seen this year. Our band's really putting out lyrics that recognize people that help to make a difference and really help us all during what we've all gone through with the pandemic coming in at 18 again keeping that theme of bringing people together six by six and their self-titled debut 
In this band, you have friend of this site, great bass player and just amazing singer, Robert Barry, Saxon's Nigel Glockler on drums, and Saga's Ian Creighton on guitar. And this is the first of quite a few prog records we're going to see on this list. Um, for my money, I think we've really begun to hit another golden age of prog. And this record really signifies that. It's melodic, great vocals from Barry, killer guitar from Ian Crichton, real thought-provoking lyrics. But I think the thing that kind of defines this new era of prog, it's very accessible. It's very listenable. Um for the song, check out Yearning to Fly, which I think sums the band up perfectly. Barry's voice is great. The music is great. Check out Six by Six. Coming in at 17, uh, Eric Gales and Crown. I've been a fan of Eric since the early 90s when Sign of the Storm came out. He's had his challenges over the years, but he's back, he's healthy, and he's teamed up with Joe Bonamassa, who helps him shape this record into easily Eric's best since those early days. For the song, check out I Want My Crown, which is the song he did with Joe, and it just really shows that Eric is back on the blues scene. We're going to stick with the blues for number 16, Eliza Neals and Batter to the Bone. Eliza is one of the great singers on the scene today, not just in the blues, but in any kind of music. Her writing just matures with every record. She just continues to get better, which is all you can ask for from an artist. She teams up with some great musicians and even has a really cool cover of Can't Find My Way Home. But the song I'm picking is called Queen of the Nile. It's the centerpiece of the record, could be the centerpiece of Eliza's career, and one of the best blues songs of the year. Coming in at 15, um, our second prog entry, Pattern Seeking Animals and Only Passing Through. This is the third record from this offshoot of the mighty Spock's Beard, and just the pop sensibilities combined with the progressive undertones that John Bakehold brings to his songs just completely sets this band apart from anyone. Um, it's prog you can sing along to. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, check out the song Rock, Paper, Scissors. Um, first of all, it's a song that makes you remember being a kid, but it also shows that sometimes the games we play as kids shape who we are and what we do as adults. Coming in at 14, again, that theme of bringing artists together, clean break and coming home. Um, the incredible James Durbin's on vocals, Perry Richardson and Robert Sweet from Striper are bass and drums, and Mike Flintz from Riot is on guitar. It's killer, straight up metal, and shows again that James Durbin's up there with people like Todd LaTorre. It's just one of the best current metal vocalists. Check out the song Before the Fall. It's just traditional metal at its finest. Coming in at 13, a band that kind of sees sort of the big brother to Clean Break. This is iconic in their record Second Skin. Um, it sticks with the theme. Nathan James, Michael Sweet, Marco Mendoza, Joel Hoekstra, Tommy Aldridge. You don't get a better lineup. But more importantly, they back it up. Um, great vocals from Nathan and Michael. It's a fun listen. Check out the track, Run As Fast As You Can. Um, it just really sets the stage for this record. And in a just world, it would be played all over a station like Sirius XM's Octane. Coming in at 12, one of my favorite bands ever, Queensryche and their new record, Digital Noise Alliance. Um, we just mentioned Todd LaTorre. He has totally breathed new life into this band. It's now their fourth record with him. And he's kind of taken that torch for progressive metal, but still keeping the riffs and melodies that make it undeniably a Queensryche song. Um, a great example of that is the track Behind the Walls. It keeps a traditional Queensryche feel. I mean, that chorus is straight out of classic Queensryche, but it kind of branches in some new musical territory as well. Rounding out the list today at 11, again, let's bring a couple people together. Dave Ellefson, Jeff Scott Soto, Vacation in the Underworld. Um, this record's been rumored to be coming for years, and it was well worth the wait. If you're familiar with Jeff Scott Soto and you know his band Soto, that's kind of his project for heavier tracks. This record's maybe even a little bit heavier than what he's done with Soto. Great songs. Um, Jeff sounds better and better with every project. It's so good to hear Dave's bass back. Check out The Reason, um, a pounding Ellefson bass line. 
and just those vocal melodies that make JSS stand alone among his peers. I mean, it's just a great song. So there you have part one of the countdown. Coming in at 20, Muse, Will of the People. Coming in at 19, Kings of Mercy and their self-titled record. At 18, 6x6 six and their self-titled debut. 17 sees us going to the blues with Eric Gales and Crown. Followed up at 16 by Eliza Neals with Batter to the Bone. 15 has Pattern Seeking Animals and Only Passing Through. 14, Clean Break and Coming Home. 13 is Iconic with Second Skin. Queensryche comes in at 12 with Digital Noise Alliance. And Ellefson Soto rounded out at 11 with Vacation in the Underworld. Stay tuned soon. We're going to have the top 10. See if your favorites made the list. Thank you for watching.